Excuse me, little dog. All right, guys. Well, it is a lovely, lovely October night here in the fall of 2024. It is a Monday night, October 21st, where it was 81 degrees today at Bugs in a Jar Farm. Might be warmer tomorrow. Uh, crazy times on the planet so the little dog and I are busy wrapping up <clears throat> the summer of 2024 didn't think I was going to have the energy to do a chronicle of the collapse other than my walk around Candor New York this morning <coughs> so I'm finally getting around here to the mainstream media at 9 30 tonight opening up the mainstream media and I'm absolutely shocked to find the story right here on Yahoo News coming out of this outfit called Salon. I like these guys right here, but you know, buried in all of the election madness. We have an opinion piece by some fellow I have never heard of named Brian Kateman, K A T E M A N. Brian Kateman. It gives absolutely no indication who Brian Kateman is, how they ever got to uh, do an opinion piece on Salon Magazine to end up in Yahoo News. But good for them, uh, whoever you are, Brian. Good for you, good for Salon, and good for Yahoo News putting this little, you know, just dropping this little article out of the middle of nowhere. Uh talking about uh, touching a nerve with me this uh, the the single worst nightmare doomer nightmare that I well the the single worst personal nightmare of course is that when you die life doesn't just end is not lights out that that is my biggest fear is that life does not end when you die but uh, my, my biggest doomer fear uh, about humans is that we're actually going to get off this planet and start taking this model that has already destroyed this planet to other planets. While I don't think this is going to happen, uh, I, I, I'm 99.9% .9 sure it ain't going to happen. We're never getting off of this planet, and the buck stops here. Uh, it, it, it is truly the most terrifying thought that I can think of is that humans uh, start colonizing space. And apparently, the uh, enigmatic Brian Kateman agrees with me, and I'm glad to see this showing up in the mainstream media tonight on October 21st, 2024. Take it away, Brian. Elon Musk and J.D. Vance want to colonize the universe. It is a horrible idea. Yes. Earlier this week, Vice President nominee J.D. Vance announced on X that he wants the United States to, quote, conquer the stars, close quote. It's a reference to his support of Elon Musk, who at a Trump rally a few weeks ago declared that he wants to, quote, make science fiction real. The rhetoric is part of Musk's effort to establish a human population on Mars, ain't gonna happen, and make humanity, quote, sustainably multi-planetary, close quote. There you go. Sustainably multi-planetary. That is the richest person on the planet talking about his dreams of humans. But 
Musk's dream is my nightmare. And despite what J.D. Vance says, it should not, quote, inspire all of us. <clears throat> For context, J.D. Vance and Elon Musk are not alone in such an aspiration. Jeff Bezos, you know, the head honcho at Amazon, which I support virtually every day, uh, Jeff Bezos, who has his own space exploration company called Blue Origin, remarked last year that he would, quote, love to see a trillion, a trillion humans living in the solar system, close quote. Richard Branson who founded the space tourism company Virgin Galactic, Virgin Galactic once noted that he too is, quote, determined to being a part of starting a population on Mars, close quote. <clears throat> Forget luxury real estate and financial tech. Space and specifically the expansion of human civilization beyond Earth has become the latest obsession of the ultra-wealthy. The problem is that expanding our, meaning humans, deeply flawed society would merely amplify our mistakes failures, and acts of cruelty on a much larger scale. We, meaning humans, are not anywhere near morally advanced enough to begin colonizing the universe. We must stop this effort before it is too late and the suffering we inflict grows further. As you might imagine, that is not how those in the billionaire club see it. Musk, for example, argues we should ensure the preservation of, quote, the light of consciousness. God damn it, got a phone coming in. Ariel, uh, if you're listening to this rant, I am trying to find out uh, what day I will be in Atlanta. Probably the uh, night of uh, October 30th, I will be seeing you, darling, in Atlanta. Uh, anyway, before I was interrupted by my crazy Doomer chick friend in Atlanta. All right. Where were we? Musk, for example, argues we should ensure the preservation of, quote, the light of consciousness, close quote, and that we must colonize Mars, quote, before something happens on Earth to prevent that, close quote. By this, he means existential threats. For example, back to quoting uh, Musk, for example, nuclear war, a super virus or population collapse that weakens civilization to the point where it loses the ability to send supply ships to Mars, close quote. This is the single richest person on the planet talking this batshit crazy stuff out, out, out of his ass. Uh, and then there are those that argue we, you know, meaning humans, have a moral obligation to make the human population as large as possible. 
to not do so would be, as one philosopher put it, quote, an astronomical waste. Yes, but this would not make any sense, would not make sense if many of those lives were bad, much like the current state of Earth. Consider that in 2023, more than 2 billion people faced moderate or severe food insecurity. Among those, nearly 1 billion people went without food for an entire day or more at times. In the past two years, we saw new wars begin in places like Gaza, Lebanon, Sudan, and Ukraine. Part of a trend as war has been on the rise for more than the last decade. I could go on and on. The suffering on Earth dramatically increases when we consider how humans treat animals. Uh, yes, we cage billions of hens, giving them less space than a sheet of paper for their eggs on factory farms. Don't get me going uh, on people who, eat, who don't eat chicken but eat eggs. We conduct sadistic experiments on more than a hundred animals each year, and we scoop trillions of fish out of the water indiscriminately in large nets who are left to die slowly by asphyxiation. This is not a good resume, to say the least. It would be a grave mistake to replicate these conditions on other planets. There is little to indicate that these injustices will cease or that new ones will not arise. We have not earned the right to expand the human species beyond our planetary borders. Unless we want to put an end to these abuses, more humans may only lead to more suffering for ourselves and for others. Some proponents of space colonization point out that exploring space has historically led to big technological advancements for those of us here on Earth. <coughs> so we should expand such efforts, not reduce them. But that is the wrong way to think about it. Space colonization actually diverts critical attention and resources from pressing earthbound issues. As much as I celebrate memory foam and scratch resistant lenses, the trillions of dollars spent on space exploration could have been better used to address more urgent problems on Earth. These challenges should take precedence over expansion into space in questioning the rationale behind plans to colonize other planets, former President Barack Obama put it this way earlier this year, quote, I would rather us invest, invest in taking care of this planet here, close quote. I would too, and given that we are already in the process of destroying one planet, it makes little sense to bring our exploitive ways elsewhere. Consider that we have more than enough resources on Earth. Hmm. Consider that we have 
more than enough resources on Earth. The issue is with how humans use them, i.e. unsustainably. If we extract resources from other planets without fixing humanity, we will simply squander those resources too. One might argue that humans are nowhere even close to reaching other planets. Ain't gonna happen. Let alone settling on them. Ain't gonna happen. And thus, this is not an issue we even need to be thinking about. But just because something might not happen, or even is unlikely to happen, does not mean that we should, should not take steps to prevent it, you know, and make goddamn sure it ain't gonna happen, especially if the potential for harm is large. We wear seat belts regularly, even though the odds of getting into a car crash are low, one in 366 for every thousand miles. Scientists monitor meteors just, I think he meant to say asteroids, not meteors. Science, scientists monitor asteroids just in case one begins to head towards us, as improbable as that is. Nuclear war is not anywhere near imminent. Hmm. Nuclear war is not anywhere near imminent. But I am glad cities like Los Angeles are preparing for the possibility. Nobody knows if these events will take place, but surely it makes sense to take steps to reduce our chances of very bad outcomes. Ultimately, it is better to contain humanity to Earth until we are more ethical and responsible. If humanity stops being short-sighted and cruel, you know, ain't, ain't gonna happen, and there is evidence good human character will persist through time, I will change my tune, but until such a time, we need to reckon with the delusion that space colonization is a good idea. It isn't. We must stop these politicians and billionaires from making the human species a multi-planetary one before it is too late. The fate of trillions of individuals depend on it. <laughs> Thank you, uh, whoever you are. Brian Cateman, uh, not sure about the uh, call on uh, on uh, nuclear war and that we have all the resources we need for eight billion clueless fucking moron humans right here on this planet. But, you know, other than those couple of problems, uh, let's see if there's any. We have 69 comments. Uh, and here is our someone, the first comment some clueless moron talking about birth rates, uh, plummeting, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, anyway, and this everyone, uh, 
Oh boy. And here's all of the A lot of people uh, saying that's a very good place to send uh, J.D. Vance, Elon Musk, and Jeff Bezos. The sooner we send them to Mars to uh, show us the way, the better. Anyway, uh, <laughs> humans leaving this planet... Oh, Jesus. Well, I have to get out there and enjoy some chocolate pecan ice cream on the blue planet while I still can. My guys. Yes, little dog. I'm sure you're ready to enjoy some chocolate. Ice cream. Oh my God.